Minecraft has the biggest and most active modding scene of any game in the world, with some mods having more downloads than most AAA games today, exceeding the tens if not hundreds of millions, it's undeniable that mods have had an immense impact on Minecraft, whether for better or for worse. In fact, the very first Google suggestion upon typing in mods is Minecraft. But how did it all begin? What were the very first Minecraft mods? Who created them? What did they do? Were they shut down by Notch? Were they eventually included into the game? Are they a remnant of an old thriving community from 2009 which is fading from internet existence? Today, we're going to talk about the lost stories of Minecraft's first ever mods, which are almost entirely gone from the internet as a whole. I had to go deep through the forums on this one, so make sure to modify that subscribe button to grey for me and help me get to 500k subs. We are pretty close to 350k now, no pressure. On June the 18th, 2009, Omen Editor, otherwise known as OCC, would make a post to the Minecraft forums. Early in its infancy stage, with Minecraft only being about a month old at this point, this is likely the first ever publicly released Minecraft mod. Omen, as it was called back then, was a map editor for Minecraft, allowing players to load and save maps, create blank maps, allowing for 2D and 3D drawing, and the ability to import and export images. Furthermore, you could interact with maps on a 2D and 3D level, change the environment and water levels, and so much more. Basically, it allowed you to edit level files, import images to create templates, and just generally completely customize your world or level as it was known back then. Here's an example where OCC imported a topographic height map of Europe, so basically just what Europe looks like on a globe, into Omen, which thus created a top-down view of Europe in-game. Furthermore, using a PNG importer, OCC was able to import the Legend of Zelda overworld map. Looking into it more, newer versions of Omen Editor released in 2010 allowed you to change cloud height, sky brightness and colour, as well as the colours of clouds and fog. It also allowed you to edit a level's save info, change the spawn point and angle, add caves, ore veins, ruins, trees and more. OCC would continue to update the mod into 2010, but it never ended up supporting infinite levels added in Minecraft InfDev, so it only supports classic and in-dev versions. Nevertheless, the features it had were so far ahead of its time, and is still the go-to level editor for those who want to edit classic and in-dev level files today. In June 2010, Omen would be spiritually succeeded by MC Edit, which we'll get into later. On September the 11th, 2009, another Minecraft forums user named Death by Nukes created a server mod which changed the product of lava and water interacting. Instead of lava and water creating stone upon interacting, it would create glass instead. However, only minutes after the jar was posted, it was taken down and seemingly never made public again. So what happened? Well, interestingly, in July of 2009, a few weeks after Omen Editor was created, Nosh began cracking down on the distribution of the game. Back then, most mods were not some external jar you would copy and add to the game files or install with a mod loader like Forge, but rather they were edited versions of the Minecraft server jar. So when players would share their game modifications, they were actually often sharing their Minecraft jar, just slightly modified. In the case of Death by Nukes, he supposedly modified the Minecraft server jar with an editor and thus took it down to abide with Notch's rules. Luckily, I was able to get in contact with Death by Nukes through the Omni Archive Discord server, who was able to send me the mod and some video footage, and he also told me that his primary motivations for making the mod was to make it easier to clean up lava spills and make it easier to restore the original shape of a room or cave if there was a lava leak. Now, if you've paid keen attention to dates and are a highly knowledgeable member of the Minecraft community, you may have realized that chronologically, I skipped over JTE. For those of you who are unaware, JTE became known on the early Minecraft forums as the Minecraft Hacking God. You see, on July the 11th, 2011, to the surprise of everybody, JTE somehow created a 100% custom server. The reason this was such an insane shock to everyone was because at the time, Minecraft's code was very obfuscated, which just meant it was intentionally made difficult to understand by Notch to protect the game's intellectual property. Furthermore, there was no modding API or anything, so somehow JTE had managed to make sense of Notch's obfuscated game code to create an entirely custom server which allowed for early Minecraft servers to generate maps, detect hackers, use various commands, spawn idle dummies, prevent or allow the placement of lava or specific blocks, and do lots of other advanced features that generally improve the core function and gameplay of Minecraft. 
For example, JTE's modifications allowed servers to reload maps from last backups on the fly, meaning no longer did players have to rebuild Spleef Arenas every time they played a game. However, only about a week after releasing the mod, JTE was pressured into stopping development of the project by Minecraft forums moderators and was threatened with a ban from the entire forums. So, JTE began privately selling the server software for $10 instead, which was only purchased by 14 individuals before being distributed by players for free behind closed doors. And while the name JTE goes almost unrecognized today, JTE's server software was the lifeblood that awoke almost all game modification in classic Minecraft. JTE server software was used to create almost all custom game modes, server modifications and more, and was almost the sole reason modding got kickstarted in the first place. Now, I've deliberately kept this section short as there's a big story to it which could take over 10 minutes to discuss that I'm planning to cover in another video in the future, so make sure to subscribe. But basically all you need to know is that JTE pioneered early classic Minecraft servers and Minecraft modding but was forced to leave the forums and is a name which is quickly fading into obscurity. In November of 2009, Arkanos would release what he called his Full Skin mod. And to explain what this is, I need to give a bit of backstory. Modding was defined slightly differently in 2009. While these days when we think of Minecraft mods, we either think of something big and elaborate like Biome So Plenty, or other mods which add dozens of new mobs and features to the game, in 2009, a Minecraft mod could be broadly defined as anything which modified the base game, whether it did things as simple as add a command, or just custom maps and models. While we did talk about some really cool mods earlier in this video, many of the first game modifications created in 2009 were what was known as Minecraft reskins. Basically modifications of the game's textures, similar to what we know as texture packs or resource packs today. One of the very first reskins was the full mod, which added this nice orange texture around the hotbar, changed how the options menu buttons looked, and altered the colors of leaves and grass. Three days later, inspired by Arkanos, Tomeri11 would release the Spring mod, making the game look much more green and lush. Now unfortunately, not all of the download links for these early mods still work, so sorry about the ugly watermark, but this is the only media of the mod left online. Then just a day later, Tom would come out with his Desert mod, and this time he went all out, changing mob textures, flowers, and more. Arkanos had been working on another reskin in the meantime, coming out with his VR skin on November the 20th, which seemed to be inspired by a Metal Gear Solid VR game or something the army used. Look, I'm the Minecraft guy, not the US Army Force 21 program guy, so maybe someone else can clear up for me what exactly that was. Finally, Arkanos would create the Winter mod, which also looked very cool. The most popular and widely used early Minecraft mod was known as the World of Minecraft mod or Client Wrapper. This was likely the very first Minecraft hack client or explicit Minecraft cheat. How it worked was that it was a separate client that could connect to and play on classic servers, as in 2009, players were still playing Minecraft in the applet, remember? Released in August of 2009, the mod was distributed illegally at first and allowed players to perform a variety of cheats or hacks in-game, as we'll get into. It was eventually converted into a client wrapper, which basically just meant it no longer contained the original Minecraft.jar code and thus was now legal. So, what's the story? Well, World of Minecraft originally began as a classic server on the 9th of August 2009 and created a small but active community that even had its own website. Interestingly, it seemed that the early server had some anti-grief measures and they even had a list of players who were caught griefing and were forced to stay in spectator mode on their website. However, their client wrapper came with the ability to use speed, fly and no clip hacks. You were able to click control to go 2x speed and shift to go 5x speed, as well as use the Q and E keys to move up and down in fly mode. So here's what confuses me. Their server and community was clearly very anti-grief, but they just went ahead and made arguably the first Minecraft hacks? Did I miss something here? But there's even more backstory. The original World of Minecraft client was actually based off a client made a month before in July 2009 called the CP Colon Client. There is basically zero mention of this anywhere online, besides a few old forum posts referencing the name. So I tracked CP Colin down and got into contact with him, and he told me that he originally made the client wrapper as a way to run the Minecraft Java applet in full screen, and not just on the tiny 400 by 300 window you would have in the browser. He continued to add features as we can see in this old version here, allowing players to fly, stop all momentum, spawn various blocks and more. He originally made this client wrapper freely available with the source code, which World of Minecraft took to make their own client and later developed the famous World of Minecraft client with. Anyways, with these newfound abilities, players could now terrorize servers with greater ease, as well as just generally have better movement options when playing. And because of that, the World of Minecraft community and client wrapper began to grow in popularity. By 2010, their website had grown to 37,000 plus members, which was incredible considering the game wasn't nearly as popular at the time. 
they continue to update and grow their community server, adding new maps, holding contests, and more. The world of Minecraft client continued to update, and eventually a version of the client with a minimap and many more other features was released. Hey YouTube, it's xkarma175, and today I'm gonna show you how to download one client. The client would become very popular, and just like how certain YouTubers scramble to make a how to install Optifine video, whenever a new version releases, there seem to be dozens of 11 plus year old how to install World of Minecraft client videos, really demonstrating its popularity. The world of Minecraft Classic Server would become more and more custom, but by this point, Notch had moved on to in-dev and inf-dev versions of the game, leaving Classic behind. The community continued to thrive for the time being, but as Minecraft development moved further and further away from Classic, eventually its growth would slow down as well. The last version of the World of Minecraft client was 3.0 and had a decent amount of custom commands which worked on any server at the time, in addition to its fly, speed and noclip hacks. Their website is still up and running and accumulated over 696,000 members with over 360,000 posts. Unfortunately, their final remaining SMP server would eventually be shut down on the 25th of October 2016 as the founder of the World of Minecraft community would decide to move on. Their forums is mostly a ghost town now, but the mark World of Minecraft left on the game will never be forgotten. I've mentioned Paul Spooner in other videos, so I'll keep this brief. But in late 2009 or early 2010, Paul Spooner started writing scripts which would modify a level's MC level files so that they would generate new structures. He wrote various scripts for in-dev, including one which added castles, one which merged two maps together, one which added city groundwork, and another which added basic craters. However, his most popular would be his Forester script, which made trees generate at a far greater size and detail than the current boring twigs in the game at the time. These trees were truly amazing, and became so popular and well liked that Notch ended up incorporating part of the script into the game, which led to the creation of large oak trees. Paul Spooner is now in the official Minecraft credits and got paid about $500 for his work. Okay, so here's where things start to get a bit more tricky. As we continue further into 2010, and Minecraft began getting more and more popularity entering infdev and alpha releases, it becomes harder and harder to isolate notable and old Minecraft mods. Certain older mods also have very little information about them besides one forum post or video, so I'm going to speed through some important stuff here, as detailed in an old thread I found. On the 21st of May 2010, player Nuclear Cheerio was frustrated with the day-night cycle, mentioning that the 5, yes not 10, but 5 minute nighttime cycle was too annoying, investigating if he could shorten it. Players rightfully gave him shit for it in the comments, so he took matters into his own hands and came back a day later mentioning a mod he was making that would add a bed to the game, allowing you to sit for 15 seconds and change it to day. Keep in mind, this was before the bed existed or was even planned in Minecraft. Players once again gave him shit for it, as he provided no proof of his project, and then a month later he would update everyone, mentioning it was mostly done, to which he received more shit, and then he was seemingly saved by the bell, as Notch announced beds would be added to the game. This was notable, as if it was in fact true, to which we don't know, this would have been one of the first game modifications that would actually add content, not just modifying textures or pre-existing mechanics. Continuing into mid-2010, and many players figured out they could make certain game textures transparent, thus creating the first X-Ray mods, or what we would know today as the first X-Ray resource packs. MC Edit would release on June the 25th, 2010, basically allowing players to do a lot of level editing, but also importantly allowing players to update their Minecraft in-dev level files to inf-dev formats, as upon not updating to inf-dev, and thus incorporating infinite terrain into the game, in-dev saves could no longer be used. MC Edit would be updated often and became the go-to world editor for years in the future. August the 5th, 2010. The Minecraft Classic community was at its most popular, but was getting left behind by Notch, who was well into alpha development by now, having just released the first version of Survival Multiplayer. Nevertheless, big communities continued to create server mods such as this Portal mod, which was based off the game Portal. It worked incredibly well, as you can see by the one video remaining online of it. Also on August the 5th, 2010, HMod by Heyo was released, a mod of the actual Minecraft server Jar. This would eventually allow players to make mods for HMod, or what we now know as plugins, as well as giving server administrators much more control over their server. You see, HMod would eventually be succeeded by Bucket, and without getting technical, what HMod and later Bucket were, was a modified version of the Minecraft server jar, which allowed for plugins to be easily used and loaded, as well as giving server administrators far more control over what they could and couldn't do with their server. HMod basically pioneered Minecraft multiplayer today, and became almost instantly popular, with the original thread gaining hundreds of responses within the first week it was posted. 
Then, one day later on August the 6th, LlamaCraft, a mod compatible with HMod, was released, allowing players to disable fire, lava, water, TNT, and more. It was basically the first real anti-grief game modification, or plugin. Definitions around this time got pretty confusing. Heyo would continue to develop mods, creating a mod which added a server browser on September the 1st, and then Super Llama, the developer of Llama Craft, released RuneCraft on September the 5th, which added a variety of magical and rune-based abilities to Minecraft. RuneCraft would go on to become the longest running and supported server mod and plugin, still used on many servers to date. Entering late 2010, the development of mods did not slow down. Mr. Messiah created Better Grass on September the 20th, 2010. AutoCart was created by BirdCloud on September the 28th, 2010, which allowed Mimecast to move at top speed far easier. Code Warrior, who created MC Edit, would release a terrain mod on September the 30th, allowing for custom terrain. More fun and creative mods began popping up in October, with Risugami releasing an Elemental Arrows and Light Sensor mod. But this is where I just have to stop, because as we continue it gets more and more niche, and it gets really hard to track what happened, as Notch broke every mod with the Halloween update, and lots of developers abandoned projects and went MIA. There's also so many more mods that started being developed due to the popularity of the game. That's the short of it though, there is a lot more detail in this thread down below if you'd like to read it. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. It took a lot of effort, so be sure to subscribe, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord. Thank you all so much for watching.